Florida Panthers have just won their first ever Stanley Cup. Of course, we know that they were trying to avoid joining the 1942 Toronto Maple Leafs as the only team to have a 3-0 series lead. Well, actually, it would have been Detroit. Detroit, I beg your pardon. Uh, they won the first three and then blew it. Florida didn't blow it. It's game seven, and after a power play comes to an end, Florida with a Carter Verhage, a.k.a. Verswaggy, and then and an unbelievable redirect between the legs of Stuart Skinner. It's 1-0. Minutes later, Matthias Janmark, an incredible pass from Cody Ceci. The stretch, Janmark in alone, and that has been a huge issue for Florida in this series. Breakaways, it is knotted up at once into the second. Game still tied at one. Oh. Ward Fogel in front. Tried to tip it, denied by Bobrovsky, and here we come the other way. Sam Reinhardt, Rister. Remarkable turn of events. It looks like Edmonton's going to take a lead, and instead, it's Florida who grabs the 2 1 lead. Just over seven minutes to go in the third. This sequence, basic, uh, you could say it won him a cup. A shot on net. There's McDavid in front. There's Hyman in front. But Brodsky covers the puck. Edmonton's just hammering at it to try to knock it in. The Oilers with a chance here. There's McDavid. There's Hyman. Sticks to pucks. Sticks to pucks, Callie. Somehow Florida keeps it out of the net. It's still 2-1. Last chance for the Oilers. And this is mayhem in the corners. And Florida's doing everything in their power to keep the puck on the boards. Tick, 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 tick. And the clock winds down. Florida has won its first ever Stanley Cup. A remarkable series. They win the first three. Edmonton takes the next three. And Florida wins game seven. Here's Kachuk and Emily Kaplan. Matthew, you dreamed about this since you were a kid. Now you're here. You're a Stanley Cup champion. How does it compare to what you imagined? It's not a dream anymore. It's not a dream. It's reality. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What can't you believe the most? I can't believe how good these two years have been. I'm so thankful for this group of guys. It's... It's it's the best it's the best place, best guys. It's something really special here with what we have. We just showed your dad Keith crying. He had a heck of a career, but he never won a Stanley Cup. What does this mean to your family? There were two moments today that really hit me. Um, one was leaving my house with everybody there, getting walked up by my dad and brother. And, I can't even describe how special that feeling was to me. And all I wanted to do was win it, not only for everybody out here, but I really wanted to win it for those two especially. This is a journey um, that starts with family, and I'm so appreciative to have the best family in the world. Um, and then the other one was Oki telling me about his talk with uh, his eight-year-old son that, that hit home with me as I was that kid once dreaming. Now about to lift the Stanley Cup. I don't know what to say. Well, go enjoy it, Matthew. Congratulations. Some more context on the final game of the 23-24 season. The Panthers finally hoist the Stanley Cup. It's the first title in the team's 30th season of existence. They avenged last year's Stanley Cup final to Vegas in five games. Winning a first title has been something of a trend of late. Florida, the fourth team in the last seven to win their first Stanley Cup, joining the Capitals. Rock the Red, Steve! <laughs> that was 2018, followed by the Blues. 2019, the Golden Knights in 23. The others to do it over that span. More rare, however, winning a franchise's first Stanley Cup in a game set in Florida, just the fourth team to do it. St. Louis beat Boston in 19. Hurricanes do it on home ice. In 2006, the Lightning also did so back in 2004. And they were the sixth team in the expansion era to return to the Cup Final the year after they lost it. And they're the third team to redeem themselves and wash away the taste of bitter taste of defeat.
joining the Penguins in 2009, the Oilers in 1984. What was different for Edmonton tonight than it was in any of those games? The Stanley Cup was in the building and they had a chance to win it. They weren't just trying to extend this series. It's mm -hmm. a different feeling when you had a chance to win that Stanley Cup. And listen, before, obviously, they're, they're just trying to keep their season alive. They know that it's a long shot. They're coming back from a 3-0, but they win that first one. Right. That second one, you start right. to have that belief. But all of a sudden now, you have a chance to win that cup. Your family's there. The excitement's there. You heard McDavid talk about it before the game, too. He said, you know, I tried. I, some thoughts creeped in my head. I tried to push them away. It's just a completely different feeling. But So it was different for them. For Florida, too, on that flip side, I think for them, they had nothing to lose. We've already given this up. The narrative, yeah. we, we blew this. Everybody's saying we blew this, right? So let's go out there. Let's play our game and see what happens. Rick Ferrar was uh, with us last night. He said he thought that, that, that Florida got spooked and they lost their nerve. I asked you before this game started if you agreed. You say you did. How did Florida get back to who they were early in the series tonight? Yeah, they just started back to their game plan. What makes them successful throughout this whole season is a hard forecheck, holding pucks in the offensive zone, mm -hmm. hunting pucks down in the offensive zone. Bobrovsky played really well tonight when he had to come up big. It wasn't miraculous saves, but especially at the end there, he held big. So it just that looked like Florida that we were used to seeing in the regular season and, and throughout these playoffs minus the three games they lost. When it gets to a game seven, I think all anyone hopes – and I defer to the man that, that skated for the cup himself. You just hope that it's that, that it's one and it's not some fluky thing. It wasn't. Ultimately, it's just the wild sequence where it appears it's about to be 2-1 Edmonton and instead it's 2-1 Florida. What can you show us about how that that sequence played out? Yeah, and you could tell right away this could be one of those games, maybe a one goal game, a bounce here, a bounce there. And this whole play starts with Edmonton has a chance right away, but it's, it's uh, Kulikov in front of the net here. He does a great job, the defenseman for the Florida Panthers. He's right here. He has an option at this point. He can do two things. He can run to the side of the net right now and attack that player that is coming to the net, but he doesn't. He lets Barkov, his teammate, take him. He comes over here, takes Edmonton's backside player, so he doesn't run around. He's patient. He lets the play come to him. So as this comes and this puck bounces there, he's there right there to clear it away. That's a goal if he chases because Holloway's sitting there. Now this brush comes up the ice. Reinhardt has the puck. If you look at Edmonton, they're in great shape. If you stopped it right here, we'd say there's no way they're scoring a goal. It's, it's a four on three. You got one, two, three, four Edmonton players to three Florida players. But the way they play this, I don't like it. And it's defenseman right here. He backs in. As he backs in right here, CC, his other partner who's right here, let him take the guy going to the net. I would like to see him come out here and challenge Reinhardt. And the reason why he can do that is because Dreisaitl's back. That middle of the ice is already taken. Sometimes as a defender, you like to back in when there's nobody in the middle of the ice just to protect the middle. But Dreisaitl's there. I wish he recognized that. He doesn't. But at the end of the day, this shot is from outside the point, outside the dots, I should say. This is one Skinner wants back. Kind of goes above his pad, below his, below his glove. So that's one Skinner wants back, but I don't think that shot should have been taken. I think the defenseman should have challenged him, stepped up, seeing that dry saddle was high coming back. There was a sequence there around the seven minute mark, and here's uh, Sasha Barkov's going to get his mitts on the cup. And that's awesome. It, it is, and it's it's cool that it's on home ice because yes. so often it, it, yeah. it's felt like lately it hasn't been, and so they get an opportunity. And I don't know how many people in hockey really thought that the home team was winning tonight because this Edmonton team, look, 18-5, to five, they got the best in the world. They hold McDavid pointless in the last two games. Yeah. I don't, and Drysaddle had one goal in this entire Stanley Cup yeah. final. That's remarkable, isn't it? It is. He didn't, he didn't look like himself. And I mean, usually, as we always do, it's going to come out in two days of, you know, he probably had a broken knee, broken knee <laughs> one shoulder. But, but he definitely didn't look like himself. That was part of the issue for Edmonton, obviously. And the way that Florida defended McDavid tonight as well, they had two guys on him constantly, took away his time and space, didn't let him gather that speed through the neutral zone. So game six and game seven, I thought they defended McDavid very well. I give them and him all the credit in the world. Down three and nothing. He was stoic. He's always stoic. Yep. But he didn't blink. And he's like, look, we'll be fine. Yep. They win 8-1. Then they win game five. Then they win game six. And they, you know, give Florida all the credit in the world. Ultimately, I think, I'm sure it's a long flight back, as we know. That, se that sequence right around the seven-minute mark was just mayhem in front. Yep. And it, it was... 
it's McDavid and it's Hyman. They've both got just swipes at it, but Florida is just in desperation mode. We joke about sticks to puck, yeah. but they're just wailing on it just to make sure no one could get a face clean. to puck at that point. They don't really, right. they don't really care. They're just keeping the puck out of the net at that point. But you're right, there was a good opportunity, and that's where Bobrowski came up with some big saves in, in that sequence as well. But this game could have went either way. This is you look at this game seven. I'm happy that it, it was close. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a blowout. Um, and I think it could have went either way. It ends up being that goal in the second period that wins it. But, you know, this Florida team all year after going to the Stanley Cup finals last year, you could just see they, they, they were built for this time, built for the playoffs. They had a good run, almost let it slip away. But, you know, I, I think for those guys, thank God they didn't because that narrative would have been tough. I agree. And we, we, we were talking uh, on the college baseball side about this Tennessee team who's been great for about four years and yeah. didn't get there. And then now they do this Florida team two years in a row. You think of, I, I, I mean, I'm not I don't, I'm not rooting for a side here, but Florida, if they would have gotten this far and gotten 15 of the 16 required wins only to fall short being there two years in a row, it, it would have felt like almost cruel to me. Yeah. And so for them to win almost feels cosmically like the, that, that, those are the right night names yeah. to be on that yeah. cup, given who they've been the last two years. Does that feel reasonable to you? It does. It definitely feels reasonable. And, and we talked about this before the game. Yeah. I, I feel good just for the guys because I've been in Stanley Cup finals before. In 15, we lost to Chicago. We're up 2-1 of the series. And I'll tell you what, I still constantly think about that series that we lost. It bugs me. It aggravates me. But I couldn't imagine being up 3-0 in a series. You're in your head. You're thinking, you know what? We're going to win a Stanley Cup here. We're up 3-0. We need one more win. And then if they were to give that away, it would haunt these guys for the rest of their lives. Because some of them won't win again, right? They would haunt them the rest of their lives. And I, I know how much it bugs me, and I wasn't up 3 nothing, So... I had it written down. I wasn't going to bring it up because I thought, like, just seriously, it's like you. Th yeah. This is the kind of thing you're just having a good day, and then yeah. you think about son of a. Dude. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I told you too. What? I'm happy for these guys, but there's jealousy there. Like, watching those guys walk. That's how much it means to hockey players to win the Stanley Cup. Like.